Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. Today, I'm really excited to have on Anne Deidre and we're going to bring her on in just a moment, but first a couple of announcements. If you have not had the opportunity to grab my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you do so at mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. Also, for those of you that are in the healing field and you want to add on to your tools and grow your business, then join me for my Galactic Ascension Channeling Certification Program. It's going to be held online February 22nd and 23rd of 2025. And I'm also hosting a galactic retreat here on the Big Island of Hawaii from April 30th to May 4th of next year. And then finally, if you are coming to Hawaii, specifically to the Big Island, Kona side, then come see me on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using my Generation 3 military night vision goggles. So without further ado, we're going to bring Anne onto the stage. Hello, Anne. Hi, Lisa. So great to have you here. Let me share your very impressive bio with people. Thank you. I'm busy. So Anne Deidre is an international celebrity expert on intuition, certified medical intuitive, best-selling author and publisher, professional artist, speaker, and coach. She's been featured on ABC and NBC TV, on the CW TV network, HuffPost Live, also a Fox News radio contributor, on NPR, CBS Radio, Business Talk Radio, and many print publications such as Examiner.com, BeliefNet, and Aspire Magazine. I've been in Aspire as well. Oh my gosh. And, Anne's transformational gifts allow her to intuitively shine a light into her client's energy system and illuminate their hidden and or dormant gifts and talents that their soul is here to share. Her unique and powerful gifts allow her to shift energetic patterns heal trauma and create new patterns so they can bring their divine gifts to the world. Well, wow. <laughs> First of all, that's a lot of publicity you've gotten over the in one year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so before we jump into um, all the stuff that you do, I would love to know just, you know, what your background is. How'd you grow up? Spiritual, religious, something else. So we understand kind of the journey of how you came to do the work you do. Yeah, well, looking back, of course, when I was in it, I thought that, you know, my life was had a kind of a normal ring to it, but I think I felt a, a little bit different a lot. But it was also, I was adopted, which I realize now, mm -hmm. feel was a choice in between lifetimes. It, it, it led me to feeling, um, you know, just a little bit, a little more lost, I think, than I might have felt otherwise, again, my own personal experience. But um, I had wonderful parents that, that raised me from a week old, going to church every Sunday. Uh, I did start to notice, though, at some point, I started to get a little outspoken. And oops, my cat is <laughs> hitting the light. And I'd be like, why are people trying to run each over in the parking lot right after we get out of church? Like, I couldn't understand. Like, there's a little bit of a disconnect for me. How, you know, people were just dashing, running to dash and get away and run people over. Um, hold on, my cat's walking through. Okay. okay. I love, love it when the animals come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's never done that before. He loves the energy. Yeah, so uh, I went to church. And then on my own in my 20s, I, I just kind of went off on my own. I left college early. I found it difficult to study. I was studying art history, but I found other things like work and friends more important. But in my late 20s, I brought myself back to like this, this chapel, this granite chapel. And I remember just sitting in front of uh, the Jesus statue. And it just realized I was praying again. And then this was like voluntary. This was me trying to find something. I was born in 1964. I'm just turned 60. And I just feel like all these decades of, uh, you know, re religion in the beginning and spirituality coming into my own as a mystic and finding my own path with my own personal connection to, to God. And, um, you know, so I really separated from my religion, but I found myself more deeply spiritual. But I also had a dark night of the soul. So everything in my life took a real turn in my early 40s. Um, I call it just hitting the void. It was a, black, a dark night of the soul. And I found this meditation technique. And it was by Yogananda Kriya Yoga. I did it faithfully. I was trying to get myself out of this dark night. 
and it catapulted me into what Yogananda describes as the baptism of fire, like my soul went into space and this white light came through me, it was like this actually happened. And I remember thinking at the time, well, my brother used to watch Star, War, uh, Star Wars and all that Star Trek, and I never had an interest in it, but suddenly I was like, I was in space. I know what that looks like. I know what that sounds like. There was this primordial sound of creation of Om just vibrating through me. It was kind of like I was meditating as I was trying to go to sleep and I kind of like woke up and I realized like I had received this uh, baptism of fire of this new consciousness that Yogananda had written about and Norman Paulson, my first mentor, wrote about in uh, Christ Consciousness and Sacred Science, uh, Meditation, Transformation, Illumination. Mm -hmm. This was all happening around 2004. That pulled me out of the dark night and... I started to get, turn it into even more of a mystic. My intuitive abilities came online, seeing, feeling, hearing, knowing, just incredible information. And I started following it, and that's just how it's been. So it's a little bit of a wild ride, but I think you understand. I never would talk about this out loud for the longest time. Would not say I was in space to anybody. So this is awesome. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you willing to share all of that. And, you know, I, yeah, I've had a, a little bumpy ride myself, as most of my viewers and listeners know. And um, but what's beautiful is that we're here to gain the wisdom and continue on and evolve and grow, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did you then from that? Is that when you actually like shifted gears in terms of career? Yeah, the dark night took me out completely. Um, I really had a what was called a successful career as a property manager, even mm. though I struggled with it, um, I was doing it well. And I just, again, things were falling apart. I was facing a divorce and that was really difficult. So um, when I left the job, it really wasn't because I wanted to, but my mental state was just so on edge because of the divorce, I just wasn't functioning well, you know, so then it just took me down completely that I was going through a divorce and I just walked out of my job. What did I do? What was I thinking? But I, but when everything came crashing down and I did the meditation technique, um, I did some part-time jobs for a little bit. I was home with the kids enough to, you know, take care of myself and take care of them, thankfully. And then I went back out into the workforce, but things had shifted because I was starting to get these synchronicities. Like there was a the editor of Aspire magazine was at, was at an event where I started to learn from mentors and take like these transformation classes. So I realized this word transformation was going to be helpful for me. So I was um, taking these speaking risks that the class recommended. I did an intuitive arts fair, brought my Oracle cards, met um, the editor of Aspire magazine, which told me about angel readings. You know, people just started showing up in my life to get, point me towards these things that I didn't have anybody in my family or friend circle to talk to about it really. But I was just following what I what felt right for me. And it turns out that turned into the career I still do today version of. I still do angel readings. I still do live events. I, um, you know, that turned into intuitive life coaching. One thing just built upon the other, but I think it's because I was willing to take a step in the direction of something really foreign to me. And uh, turns out it's, a, it's something that a lot of people know about now. So it's wonderful how the mainstream and metaphysical are kind of merging here. Yeah, definitely. It became my job once I wrote a book and published it and began speaking because you have something good that you know really helped yourself. You, I prayed that I would have the confidence and the courage to go out there with it because that wasn't my style at all at the time. But yeah, I felt like God and company, if you want me to go out and speak about this, I'll do it, but you got to help me. So, uh, so yeah, I, I do. I feel like I've gotten a lot of divine support with all of this. How about you? You feel like that too? Like there's just people show up and you, synchronicities start happening. They do, especially like, you know, so previous to my spiritual business, I was also in the real estate industry oh, in mortgage. Nice. And I had an interior design and home staging business for 12 years. Oh, my and my mother was a real, she owned a real estate company um, in my younger life. And so, yeah, I grew up around that very normal world right. however though i did grow up um she was very metaphysical my entire life so oh, that's I, nice. <laughs> yeah so at least i chose her well for that and i know yeah. that 
is why I chose her. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, you know, as far as career, I didn't think that I would ever um, do anything spiritual. I, I had my spirituality, but I didn't think that I had anything to offer. And wow. yeah, so it took 40 plus years for me to get there too. I'm 51, <laughs> almost 52. <laughs> you had a midlife crisis. <laughs> So, well, and, I mean, I think it's great for the audience to know that it's never too late to shift gears, right? Because even some of my clients are in their 60s and 70s, and they're still, like, yes. shifting gears, like, ready Damn. to go. Yeah. Yeah. How is the Waves of Volunteers? I love Dolores Cannon's book, The Waves of Volunteers. Yeah. I, I tend to work with the first waivers, the second waivers in particular, Mm -hmm. being born calling out to the universe who wants to help planet earth yeah uh, you know, i will um you know and then coming into density and awakening through the process and working with the divine laws where anything you personally transform the whole collective can be transformed and realizing that like having that lone wolf thing for the longest time and the feeling different up until a certain point but now where we get to meet and gather like this i mean it's really pretty amazing it's it's starting to be the, what like, like what we thought it would be, right? In between lifetimes that we would yeah. be able to be like ourselves. Yes. Well, and that's part of why I wanted to do this show in the first place was it was it's kind of a personal reason because I wanted to meet my tribe. I yeah. wanted to build community. And so, yeah. So coming together with people like you is just, yeah, we're, we're meant to come back together yeah. and uplift the world. Yeah. Let people know you're right where you're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, so tell me about that um, that first book that you wrote and what inspired that. Yeah. So it was like a regular Saturday. And all of a sudden in my kitchen, I got this image of one of the paintings in the book. I now know it was my third eye. I just thought it was, you know, you see a book in your head is what I used to call it or in my imagination, which is higher consciousness. It's not something small whatsoever. But I was been doing the Kriya Yoga. So this uh, painting that I had done just showed up and I saw it and then I like saw words around it. And then I heard the, a voice, I call it the voice because it started to just really speak loudly. Say, you will write a book. I literally walked into my living room, my husband at the time was watching football and I just like, I'm going to go write a book. And I think he's like, Oh, okay. And I went in and I just started like writing. Um, and then I typed it. And uh, by then I was like going to work and working on weekends and the kids were watching SpongeBob. And, and there I was writing this book. I heard the, the voice say, get your paintings together. So I had all these paintings that I'd started doing because they made me feel better. Like I said, I was an art history major, but I never yeah. took painting classes because I didn't, didn't have the confidence or some teacher in high school said, you're not a very good artist. So I said, okay. And I, I agreed with her, but then I just bought paints and did it on my own throughout the nineties. It helped me feel better. Uh, come to find out, I have some of them here. There's, there's like encodements of consciousness. Like some of my paintings, like when I did this, in 2005 it's called we are not alone christ is always with us blue sapphire star energy like where did i get that title in 2005 right i was yeah playing um spiritual world or the kingdom of heaven is within you with a gold rose it's like a color that you wouldn't see on this planet but so i channeled through my artwork and writing like light language some of my paintings have little symbols in them i didn't know this at all at the time and I didn't think that there would be anything I would ever do with this art. But you have cosmic consciousness. I mean, now it makes sense. But at the time, like, oh, I like this pink. I like this glitter star. And so I tell people, just follow what you're guided to do. You really may not know until later that it's part of your contribution to humanity. So I've had some art shows and written in the book, worked with my oracle cards, sold my oracle cards through the Daily Ohm. And... You know, things just started to make sense, but not at first whatsoever. Okay. Well, and I think that's a good message because yeah. I think people expect like overnight success or yeah. to, to be like to show up and it, it, that's not how it works. Generally. This was really authentic. I had no clue. <laughs> I was painting away in my living room with music blaring, making a big, nice mess and never realizing that it would be, you know, on, on walls and like I sold it through the museum store. I was working a little part-time as a reception at the museum, 
local museum and one of the um, assistants came in and she said she was house sitting that weekend and, and somebody had my painting on their fireplace and I was like, oh my gosh, and it's called Peaceful and it's mm -hmm. got all the, the vibes, you know, it's um, intuitive healing artwork, which I had no idea. There was one other intuitive artist, I think Googled that for some reason in the 90s and now there's like, I don't know how many countless, I'm thrilled. Because I'm like, I'm doing this thing. I don't know why, but I'm going to call it intuitive art. And now it's like a genre. So anything with your intuition, I think, is going to be in the history book someday. I really think. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's not what we learned in school, but it's it's a thing. Well, so it's not in your bio, but before we got on here, you showed me one of your books that you channeled different entities. I would love for you to share about about like how that channeling came online for you and yeah, so this, yeah this one this inner visions the healing path of art so it ended it started out i had this um one of the things that really brought in my dark night of the soul is i always felt like i had this calling that i was supposed to be doing something i couldn't figure out what it was so after the dark night of the soul it just pretty brought me down to ground zero and then i was trying to rise up like the phoenix here with my kriya yoga um, the first sentence I wrote was, was dreams. We're told to follow them, but what if we don't know what they are? And then the book just started writing itself. Like I said, just like sit down and I would, I was channeling through writing, um, just writing about the 21, 21 artworks. They had divine messages. And then at the end, there was like this thing where I was working at that museum. There was a Frank Lloyd Wright house and people were always coming up to me really angry that they didn't get their ticket right or something. And I remember, I didn't know how to handle it at first. I started getting really upset. Like all these people are mad at me about the front, about these tickets. Like I don't have anything to do with it. And I would just get like freak out. And I heard the voice, which is my collective. It's like my team, but it sounded like one unison voice. And I heard when people get mad at you, don't get mad back, be sincere, open your heart. <laughs> so there I am in the museum. Like, how can I help like sincere customer service, right? The true vibration of it. And I started to notice that people not only calm down, they got happier. And I realized, I again, this was like the 2000s and there wasn't a name for it, but I realized that this voice that had guided me to respond instead of react was transformational. I was doing alchemy, I was doing transmutation. And I wasn't taking on their energy, but I was coming up with enough pure love, sincerity, compassion to really listen into what they were, what they were really upset about. And there was just like this new energy coming through. So I wrote about that in the book. And that, to me, feels like the Palladian hallmark of how to live a right action life. It's not about right or wrong, right? But the Palladians were teaching me how to live on this planet and stay in alignment. Yeah, that's right? beautiful. Because that absolutely is what they're all about, from my understanding. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I know. And I didn't know. The thing I heard, which I love, is like they're working with us. Like I thought, well, I'm working with these great beings now and then I heard it like they're working what they resonate with us as we raise our vibration as we open up to you know accept our assignment and uh turns out it was Jesus Buddha the Palladians Krishna Michael Gabriel uh, as a group as a collective and like I said when I was writing it I just knew that I even if I had to stop and go to work and do everything else I was doing in my life when I sat down, when I did, no matter what time it was, the channel opened back up and there I was writing along. And that's what I've written a few books now at this point. And um, it all, it's all the same process. Like once I get that download inspiration, I'll get like a, a key sentence and then it's like off and running. And I just make myself available when I can, a Tuesday, Saturday, or Friday. And it's just like all right there and just comes right through. It's intensive, but... Yeah. yeah. So what what inspired you to become a medical intuitive? Well, that was another piece where I was working with the chakra system. So after I was doing angel readings, I took angel readings and then I became an intuitive life coach because somebody said, if you wrote a book, you could coach people. Well, three years I had it on my website and I'm like, I hope nobody signs up. I really don't know how to do that thing of coaching. Then somebody did sign up and then I heard with the voice. <laughs> work with the chakras so there i am in barnes and noble looking up chakra books over the weekend with my clients that i'm starting with on monday who just signed up for a four-week program 
and I dove in and I, and I was guided how to work psychically and energetically with their chakras. This was a four week program. They signed up for another four weeks and then somebody else during that time found my website. You see what I mean? Like I wasn't advertising. I wasn't marketing. People were finding me and I was just off and running. And so then I was working with people even for years at a time with their chakra systems and bringing, and I didn't realize I was helping them to ascend their energy. I was able to clear the blocks. I heard another one of your guests talk about that too. I really didn't know what to call it, but I was doing that. And then I realized in 2015, okay, so the throat chakra, I'm working with that. Wouldn't it be nice to, if somebody's having a thyroid issue to, I wanted to be, I wanted to, I wanted to know everything. I really did. I wanted to be able to help people with anything that they came to me with. So just for the point of being of service, you know, my, my intellectual logical mind didn't even like being in school, but this was different, you know, self, self-study, self-taught, but I also took it with um, Dr. Mona Lisa from Hay House. That was a great 10 day immersion program. Um, you know, it just feels good to learn and to teach, I think, to, to do, to do both. I'm a perpetual student and I feel a perpetual teacher at this point, teaching everything that I've been learned or guided to, which I find terrific, you know, since yeah. I dropped out of, well, I did go back to college and finish. I graduated because my mother kept wow. me all the time to finish. So I did finish that, but I'm, I'm not really using it, you know, in the way that the classes that I've been drawn to work with. And, and I think working with people is its own university in a way, like we can learn from each other whenever I'm coaching people information that comes through me is new information that I didn't logically know before. Mm -hmm. um, it yeah. Is, it was pretty fascinating. You know what I, I mean? I do totally. Cause I mean, so I got a PhD, but I don't obviously practice in that <laughs> field anymore, but, <laughs> but I gain valuable skills and tools um, doing that and have a deep appreciation for the yes. animals and all, all of that beautiful stuff. Yeah, well, I think that's great. I think it's great. If I could find something that I, I mean, I would still take classes today. I, I feel like this, I'm unretirable. I'll, I'll keep doing whatever and and learn and grow and become self-taught and download and, and everything. There's just yeah. so much. Well, um, one of the things that I love from Dr. Bruce Lipton, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but oh, yeah. you're either growing or you're dying. So the more that we can continue, yes, to yeah. not give up on life and yes, yes, and know that there is so much more to learn than, than yes, yeah. we can live a very long, healthy life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting into that a lot more too. This, the self-care piece of being a divine channel, that was the, what the last thing I think, or the, the last least thing I was paying attention to for the most part then. It's like surround yourself with selenite. Take a look at, um, I remember I was, I mean, this channeling group, the Palladians, it, they're just, I, I love them so much. It's like I was having a little bit of a tough time and I was making this iced coffee every day with, I think it was Splenda back then. That's how long ago it was. Whipping it up. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to whip up my iced coffee. And I heard very clearly in no judgment fashion whatsoever, completely neutral, a little bit teacher-like, but it would be best if you did not consume the ice cream. Not that, the, you know, but it, it's your free will. But because I was going through a nervous thing, I was like nervous and anxious about stuff. And they said, we're like, you are not nervous. You are not anxious. Your caffeine is making you anxious. So pick it or not. But we're just let, enlightening you to the fact that um, you can make other choices. Same thing they did when my kids had an, an Easter bunny. I got them an Easter bunny years this is years and years ago and um they weren't eating their easter easter bunny and i said hey do you mind if i have a bite of your easter bunny and my son jake said sure so i took a bite of the easter bunny chocolate easter bunny and the next thought i had was oh i think i'll take another bite this this chocolate is good and then the voice came online again and said you don't really like it it's not really that you like it all it's just lighting up the different centers in your brain and system and i just saw like this pinball machine effect and and I was like, drop the chocolate. I'm like, whoa, that was weird. Like, mm. they're like, you're right. I don't really want another bite. It's just hitting some of my receptors of the centers of, you know, whatever that dopamine stuff, you know, all that stuff. And 
So they that's they they still do that. They're like, hey, did you know that this is happening when you do this? <laughs> They're so smart, right? They are. Well, and how fantastic yeah. that you are tapped in and listen to it. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I mean, I just couldn't eat the the chocolate after that in the same way. I'm like, I don't need something to just like light up my like I'm some pinball machine. I just thought it was good chocolate, but never mind. <laughs> I put it down. Yeah. It, it, it's really, you know, awareness. They just, they give you higher awareness and then you can still do what you want. But I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in terms of then how you work with clients, like what kind of clients are your favorite to work with? Who comes to you yeah. that you can really help? And the thing I noticed was that there was a, a you know a purpose i know that's a word people throw around more i feel like i started so organically early on and just was doing these angel readings which turned into coaching which meant that i can help people resolve their conflicts in their energy system the false beliefs they took on just realizing that's what i was doing like a psychic detective so i liked being able to find the things that were bothering them and release them and and allow then i would start to see the gifts and talents that they had and i do call it was like weeding out a garden, although weeds are so powerful, I hesitate to say it like that, but it's just clearing out what wasn't serving them. And then I love being able to illuminate what is really true for people so that they can feel lit up and on track and on purpose. Like I said, I think each of us that have a personal sense of a mission can come from a place of some place in their life when they really struggled. And I really struggle with that, finding that thing for myself. So if I can work with people who want to find out more about their purpose, how they can bring it to the world, then I love being able to help people do that. I mean, I do channel websites. I do channel um, like titles. I call them my divine business guides. They'll give me book titles for people. They'll give me business titles for people, just different kinds of information. Cause, and this was way before the internet or Facebook or anything else. Like they, things were starting to download to me to help people get online on the computer. I've had my business since 2005. I've had seven websites I mean, I come home from work and be on this dinosaur computer thing. And I just knew and my intuition was saying, learn this, learn this, learn this. I'm like, learn what? Like, what is this? It, it was almost like a, it's like this prompting. They were like, get a business, get online. You know, nobody in the world that I knew in my life knew why I was sitting down on my computer trying so hard to figure the whole thing out. But now, of course, it makes sense. And now that's what I help other people do um, with the vibe and the feel and the energy that is them or their intuitive healing business and, and help bring that out. I love that. That's a thing to do, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And I've been, um, I've been a, this is my third business that I've had in the last 21 plus years. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you too. Yeah. yeah. And um, I actually back in 2003 was um, building a massive website for that. Oh, <laughs> so. I knew you were a soul sister. Yeah. <laughs> there we were. <laughs> Burning the <laughs> night oil. <laughs> yes, completely. And so I've always done my own websites and all of that. But um, so, okay. So what what have been some major transformations that your clients have experienced? Any favorite story that stands out in your mind? Yeah, I love, I, can't, early, I remember early on there was somebody that, I was at a live event doing my angel readings and I, I was offering my coaching program. And she says, I don't know why, I just feel like I should work with you. Um, helping to resolve some of the grief from her parents passing and whatnot and working with healing abilities, um, I love doing. And then, through the time of working together after she was really feeling um, healed from her grief, really rather completely, this intuitive business popped up and I still see her at live events every now and then with her intuitive photography, the way that she's able to, to take these photos of the natural world and turn them into this beautiful mm -hmm. artwork and framework and, and, you know, to come by my table and, you know, it's just it's such a good feeling to know that, the, the grief was blocking the artistry, but then we were able to tap into this flourishing life purpose for her. And so, yeah, that there's other stories like that too, where it just means a lot, a lot to have the compassion, work with the divine guides that can really help 
people feel better. I think well-being is one of my main, it used to be like life purpose, but well-being, I think I will continue to care about. Yeah. On this planet, that people feel their best. Well, and I totally understand that grief piece because um, I don't know if you, from listening to some of my stuff, so it, yeah. it's actually been a year ago that my husband committed suicide. And yeah. so um, fortunately I have the spiritual awareness to mm -hmm. that I was able to process that grief yeah. very quickly. But it's now that um, as we're recording this in a few days, it'll be the one year mark and okay. it does come back up in waves like the emotions and yes. so, yeah and i mean for me, i've been very gentle with myself this past year in terms of not pushing myself to normally i'm putting out a book a year and i've like since 2017 when i started the business I have nine Oracle decks, four self public or self sole authored books, four compilation books. <laughs> so uh, like I'm a generator, like I'm a creator, yeah. generator. Yeah, I, yeah. And this year haven't put out anything. I am working on a new book and I feel that energy coming back online. But yeah, that. Well, we want us to, I mean, working is, creating is living to me very much so. And I know for you too, the way you describe it, I have that same dialing into that. And it's very replenishing if you do it right, right? It, it doesn't yeah. deplete you. But there's also something too, sometimes I've just said, I just want to live my life um, yeah. and have a little downtime where I'm just exploring what what's what's new new for me with without that um you know my to-do list probably never will end and i and, and i love it actually but yeah the good for you i i know that things are happening in the interim and then the word recreation i i heard this one time that when we're in recreation or you know out in the park recreation we're recreating right so you're recreating something within your recreation so while you're yeah. having fun you, you're something is happening so yeah so yeah. that's cool. We can feel good about just play. <laughs> right. So, yeah. and so I guess, and why that came to me to bring up is that, you know, for those people out there that are still grieving something, yeah, um, that you can clear that so that you can move forward. Yeah. I, I think though I've noticed too, for myself, yeah, our personal journey though, things that'll surprise me that'll trigger something an emotion a memory and I may burst into tears really some of this has been coming up more this year and to hold the awareness to witness myself with my emotion feeling it but also witnessing go above my head a little bit and watch myself get sad is a whole different experience than being in the sadness so that's something that they've been working with me to do, to, to have the compassion uh, frequency emitted with the noticing and the observing and being in your, witnessing yourself, right? Yeah. Being in your own presence, like your higher self is like holding space, your personality, your humanness. Yeah. Because we came to be both. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and for me, I've been, um, more so probably than ever in my life. I've been asking my team, my spirit, my angels, my galactics, all, all of my guides, like, I need your help team. <laughs> so yes. they, when we ask, then they can support us, but they can't go right. against our will. So we have to remember to ask. Yes. Which I have, sometimes I have post-its or screensaver reminders and things like that. I think the strong soul energy of light worker star seed is I can do it, <laughs> but yeah, that's true. It's yeah. true. So, um, is there any other, um, wisdom that you would love to share with the audience at this moment? Well, I'm just looking down at one of my Oracle card decks and I'm noticing this, can you see it? Ground your energy, mm. just, feeling the ground, your energy. You're very grounding Lisa. I like people tell you that. Ground to clear your energy. You can sit on a rock and let stress release through your root chakra. Mother Nature supports your well-being. 
Yeah, one time when I was going through a lot of difficult stuff, I went out to the beach and I sat on a rock and all of a sudden I felt this energy going through my root chakra. And I heard the rock say, you're welcome. And I was like, and it went into the rock, I think into the crystalline core of the earth and transmuted. And I literally felt lighter. So that's what this Oracle card is about. But I think it's going to, we are, we are anchoring energy. We're grounding energy in. So any energy that's not serving you, if it feels discordant at all, find ways to, to release it. I like releasing to the central sun too. I bet you do too. The central sun transmute everything up to the central sun. We don't have to hold on to things that we that we choose not to. I think we've got to definitely process. Um, but keep on releasing because the, the energy we're grounding into this planet right now is creating a whole new template, right? The whole new earth. And so everybody doing their part, I think it's really facilitating greater times. No matter what you see, you know, when you look around, you know, each, each of us personally have that individual contribution with humanity to elevate the consciousness and i love that it starts with ourselves so we can help ourselves feel better and, and have personal reasons and that will impact the collective because that's how it works right it's the two yeah so yeah well, have a lot of fun everybody <laughs> because it helps the world it does well and that's interesting that you um said that i'm that i'm grounding because actually my last few guests have said the same thing <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. And what I, you know, what I understand is the more that we're able to ground ourselves to this earth, the, the higher out we can go into those higher dimensional realms. Grounding into the crystalline core. Yes. Of the earth. Yeah. Ground yes. deep. So you're not knocked off kilter, centered, grounded. Yeah. Yeah. It must be lovely there in Hawaii. It's, it is it's a vortex and you're a vortex. So, <laughs> so exponential. Yeah. I think I've been creating vortexes in here, right here in New Hampshire. And I don't know if you've heard other people talk about this, but you know, people like, well, you know, why do you live where you live? And I just remember always saying, I'm here to light up the East coast, <laughs> but yeah, I think we're all going to, um, you know, to find home here now at this time is also, you know, this is it. This is heaven on earth. This is the place to be, mm -hmm. you know, get, get your, yourself in the most environmental energy of your space. I don't know if you, I love your office there. I love your friend there. Um, you know, surround yourself with things that you love that let, that light you up and let this be a paradise because that's what we're here to create and experience. It is, and um, I what my first book that I wrote actually is Sacred Soul Spaces: Designing Your Personal oh. Oasis. Oh my gosh! Which you know I brought in the spiritual side of design, um, the science, and then the practical nice, stuff please. in that yeah. book. <laughs> so, I felt kind of psychic when I said that. Like they knew that. <laughs> you <mentioned> that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and oh. and just you know to what I've done. So I have a private um, outdoor courtyard at my house and that's actually where my husband committed suicide. And so over this last um, eight and a half months, since I, I have a, a new friend slash partner, um, we've been transforming the courtyard into oh, an oasis. Nice. So, and and growing tables, hydroponic growing tables for food and all of that. So it's really like you can transmute the energy. That's an honoring. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. So I love that you brought that up. Yeah, that's <laughs> tremendous. Yeah. So how, how do people find you? Um, what socials are you on and um, your website? Yeah. So, yeah. My eighth and final website, I've had for 10 years, is andedra.com, A-N-N-E-D-E-I-D-R-E. -E -E. um, I have an Awaken Your Divine Power gift set there. I join my community. I'm also working on a new Ascension Chakra gift set. So um, that'll be coming out. And I'm on um, Andedra Intuitive, kind of starting over with Facebook. Had a, a little bit of a thing a couple of years ago, but I'm on Andedra Intuitive and I started on Instagram late too. 
um, the Ian Deidre there. I think there was another one. So I had to become the Ian Deidre. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I hang out there a little bit and just got into threads. So that's kind of an interesting platform too. You can write a little bit. But yeah, I love to share a lot on my, on my Facebook personal page. I had a business page, but I really spend more time on my personal page, Andy Dr. Intuitive. I like sharing there. I'm going to love to, to like friend me there. That'd be awesome. So thank okay. you, Lisa. Yeah, excellent. Well, um, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you'd like to share before we mm. end the show? No, it's just really been an honor. Really enjoyed our time together and uh, send blessings to um, our lovely communities listening. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you so much for being here. And for those of you watching and listening, thank you so much as always. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha. Mm -hmm.